round the back, you have a hatch that opens majestically at the press of a button. Eventually. Hmm. Go on, go on. Go. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. there we go. Yeah. What the f? Yeah. Go, go, there, there we go, there we go. Right, now. This is the McLaren GT. Like all McLarens, it has the soul of a sports car. It's fast, powerful, loud, aggressive, and is perfect for anyone that wants to tackle a racetrack. But the GT has a broader set of skills than the average McLaren. It's not a supercar, it's a GT, which means it was built for comfort, with a luxurious interior offering everything from leather to cashmere. It has comfortable suspension and seats, all the mod cons you'd expect from a Grand Tourer, as well as a decent amount of luggage space in the front and rear. This makes the GT ideal not necessarily for the racetrack, but for a slightly different type of driving. a 600 horsepower, 170,000 pound supercar, this is probably the last place you want to take it. I mean, who wants to spend time in traffic not unleashing 600 horsepower? But actually, the McLaren GT is designed to be at home in places like this. It's got an element of GT-ness about it. It's really easy to drive. The steering is super light, the brakes are easy to modulate, although the pedals are a bit too close together. And here's the big one. This isn't a typical GT car. The engine isn't at the front. This is a McLaren, so the engine is back there. And that means there's no long bonnet to try and peer over and try and judge exactly how close you're getting to people and things. It's actually a bit like driving a really powerful Fiat 500. It's tiny. Normally, driving a mid-engine sports car in traffic is a struggle, but the GT is fairly easy going. The nose is relatively high as standard, but can be raised to tackle steep curbs and speed bumps. It's also relaxing. It's quiet, luxurious, and they've given the seats in this car extra padding, so it's more comfy on long journeys or when you're stuck in traffic. And when you're stuck in traffic, you can use the time productively. You can soak up the gorgeous interior, admire the semi-aniline leather, same as you get in a Rolls Royce, listen to the amazing sound system, 1200 watts from Bowers and Wilkins, and generally just bask in the fact that you're driving around in the most livable McLaren ever, the most practical McLaren ever. The GT is a good car, but just how good is it when it comes to everyday jobs that ordinary cars take in their stride? McLarens say this is a car you can use every single day, and they might be onto something. The mid-engine design means that up front you actually have a fair bit of usable space, around 150 litres or half what you get in a Ford Fiesta, but that's not all, check this out. Around the back, at the press of a button, I can open the rear hatch to reveal a further 450 litres of space, apparently. McLarens say it's enough to hold two sets of skis or a set of golf clubs, but Here's the problem, I don't ski and I don't play golf. What I do is I go shopping at the weekend and I buy groceries and I can tell you this is completely impractically shaped for normal shopping. Picture the scene, right? You're driving along, you've done your shopping, kid runs across the middle of the road, you slam on the brake and suddenly your passenger's been impaled by a baguette and you've got concussion from a coconut. I see what they've tried to do with the McLaren GT. Technically, it has the space, but is it usable space? I'm not so sure. This is a McLaren, and McLarens aren't for popping down to the shops for a pint of milk and a packet of fags. McLarens are for driving. This is what I'm talking about. This is where the McLaren GT makes the most sense out here on these epic roads on an epic journey. Look, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with popping down to your local supermarket and buying some bread and a cheap bottle of wine, 
but what's the point in doing that when you can load up the sat nav, fill up with petrol, head off to your favorite vineyard a couple of hundred miles away, and buy a bottle direct from the source? On the way there, that's when you can appreciate the differences between the McLaren GT and traditional GT cars. This thing's built around a touring-inspired version of McLaren's carbon fiber monocoque, so it's light. It only weighs about 1,500 kilos, and that means it's up on its toes, it's agile, just ready to dance. This thing loves a corner. McLaren is one of the few manufacturers that are still using hydraulic power steering systems. Everyone else is using electronic stuff. And that means the GT just has so much feedback in the steering, you feel absolutely everything when you pile into a corner. And feel is exactly what this car is all about. Many GTs are numb, leaving you detached from the action. This GT in comparison feels alive, involving. There's a lovely flow to the way this car moves. The steering is slower towards the dead center, but speeds up as you apply lock allowing for smooth, easy driving when you want it, or fast, aggressive turns when the roads call for it. Push too quickly through a bend and there's a subtle, controlled body roll developing into a progressive understeer. It's fast and agile, but never snappy. It might look more like a supercar than a GT, but it drives like a brilliant hybrid of both. The ride is good too. The GT uses McLaren's proactive damping control system with a fancy software algorithm that uses sensors to read the road ahead and make the ride more soft or firm as each situation demands it, within two milliseconds. It works well, certainly on roads as smooth as these, but how they cope on bumpy British roads remains to be seen. Special shout out has to go to that thing just behind my head. It's a new version of McLaren's 4-litre twin-turbo engine, but this time it has a low inertia turbo, new intakes, and a higher compression ratio. And that means it's got a much flatter torque curve than before. You get most of the torque, about 95%, low down in the rev range from about 3,000 RPM, but it still pays to ring this thing out. Peak torque happens at around 5,500 RPM, up to 6,500 and you get the full 630 newton meters and it just feels so strong. As for the noise, well McLaren know GT customers want their cars to sound as good as they look. So they've engineered the exhaust manifold and muffler to create a much bassier V8 sound. The mixture of the turbos whistling and the exhaust burbling is a great combination. 0 to 60 happens in 3.2 seconds, 0 to 124 in 9 seconds. And McLaren reckons it will do 203 miles an hour in a straight line flat out. I'm not going to do that today, but I have no reason to doubt them. We judge a GT by its ability to inspire a journey, to make you want to drive unnecessarily epic trips in search of the most mundane of things, things you didn't actually need to travel for. And in that respect, this car is up there with the best. Yes, there are more comfortable, more practical cars to live with, but very few are as engaging or as entertaining to drive. This isn't just a GT, it's a super GT, a driver's GT, a GT unlike any other. <laughs>